Hey y'all, who dat and what is up? I am Jeff Nowak. This is not really Inside Black and Gold, but this is the Inside Black and Gold podcast feed. So I did want to get you a little bit of an intro here before I throw you to a, I don't, I don't want to call it a special edition, but a sports talk slash Saints Hour fueled quick recap of what all went down today for the Saints 53-man roster reveal. I guess it's cut-down day, whatever you want to call it. The Saints went from a 91-man roster, and that includes Charlie Smith in that international spot, to a 53-man roster. It was a really interesting day. You saw several UDFAs, four UDFAs, for that matter, make the roster. That's Dallin Halker, Rico Payton, Mason Tipton, and punter Matthew Hayball. Yes, we are going to see a different punter for the second consecutive Year actually the third, if you consider Blake Gilligan, then Lou Headley, then Matthew Habel. Now we gotta wait, right? Because the waiver system is in effect. I expect the Saints to be pretty active on the waiver wire relative to some other years. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I've been speaking Presley Harvin into existence. I wouldn't be surprised if the Saints went on the waiver wire for their new punter and for a few other positions. But we're going to get into it a little bit more in the next episode of Inside Black and Gold. I didn't want to record a full episode until we know exactly what happens on waivers because I don't want to overreact and give you a full podcast episode about guys who made the 53-man roster and then got cut the next day. That's not going to work for anybody and just doesn't make sense. So my plan is to wait out the waiver system, go to availability tomorrow, talk to players in the locker room, and then come back and record a full episode when we know a little bit more about who all made the roster. But I did go on WWL Radio tonight with Mike Haas, voice of the Saints, and we broke down a few notes, a few highlights from the Saints 53-man roster. If you're looking for a full breakdown, go check out WWL.com. I have a full breakdown of all the cuts with quick takes on each player who was cut, and then also a full breakdown of the 53-man roster with breakdowns of each position. So if you're looking for a fuller breakdown, go check that out. Otherwise, here is the chat I got to have on WW Radio with Mike Haas. Enjoy. Welcome back. This is Mike Haas, and we are now joined by sideline reporter Jeff Nowak, who's been busy today watching that wire, watching the Saints releases, and then finally official and got the 53. They got the guys... Uh, that they waived and put on the, terminated the contracts. I guess just Jeff, before we kind of get too deep into it, is it if, if if I looked at your 53, you know, that you did last night or this morning compared to the 53, are there uh, wildly significant differences? There's a few. There's a few. Um, they kept more linebackers than I expected. They kept more wide receivers than I expected. You know, the numbers really were, were the biggest difference. I wouldn't say that I necessarily was super far off on the players that were kept it's just like you know i was between a few at wide receiver you know are they going to keep bub means are they going to keep mason tipton they kept both right at linebacker you're looking at jalen ford he's been dealing with an injury demarco jackson's been dealing with an injury maybe that opens the door for a Khalik hudson uh they didn't keep him they kept both the injured guys so that was really the main difference is guys that i wasn't sure about hey you haven't seen him in the preseason games but you know, have they've shown enough that you want to keep him around. Mason Tipton was the one that I really had no gauge on, and it's good to see him stick around. And it tells you how much they like Mason Tipton, that they kept him around despite not seeing him in a single preseason game. I've heard some people say, like, oh, it's like Rashid Shahid. They're trying to hide him. I don't think that's what was happening at all. I think if he was healthy enough to play, they would have got him out there. Because if you remember, they cut Rashid. Rashid didn't make the initial 53-man roster, and there's a benefit of maybe hiding a guy when you want to sneak him on the practice squad. When you're talking about, we want to keep this guy, you want to get as much tape as possible. So that was a big one. That was a big one for me. The other one, you know, if you're talking about calling it correctly, I actually did have Rico Payton on my 53. Um, You know, I had them keeping five cornerbacks, obviously, the the four that everyone knows, Marshawn Lattimore, Paulson Adebo, Alante Taylor, and Kool-Aid McKinstry. And then I was kind of between... A few other guys, Shamar John Charles, you know, I talked to his camp this morning and they were a little disappointed. They felt like, hey, we, he, he, he had a really good camp and he did, um, but he wasn't able to make it. Obviously, he was running with the ones, but they're both outside corners were hurt. So that does that does skew things a little bit. But I just think they felt like 
they could not get Rico Payton through waivers. Um, you know, I, I talked to his camp as well, and they said they were getting calls from other teams kind of inquiring, like, hey, do you think you're going to get cut? Because, you know, we'll be interested. And I, so I think that that played a role. I don't think the Saints felt like they could sneak him through waivers. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a pretty interesting day, right? You, you've got a new punter for the second year in a row. Lou Headley was the first cut of the day, uh, at least as far as the reporting was concerned. So, uh, we'll see if Matt Hayball is the guy. I'm not willing to put a stamp on it yet because I think we have to get through waivers before we, you know, we celebrate anything for a lot of these guys. But it, it was for sure an interesting cut down day. No, I agree, and I think the 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 beneficiary of the position battle, the six wide receivers, six linebackers, uh, is the fact that they have eight offensive linemen, uh, probably go between 10 and 12 when you look at the active plus the practice squad, but we're not there yet. So they have eight as we speak. And, you know, I, I was watching, you know, the, 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 the released names today and numbers, and certainly offensive line played a big role. i got to believe that's going to be an area of uh, – of, of aggression when they start looking at the waiver wire and who they can pick up. No question. No question. Eight offensive line. Like that number alone tells you that there's at least one player on the 53 man roster. That's going to, that's going to end up moving away. Uh, Cause you're not, I, I think nine is the number that you want on the active roster. Obviously there's not a, there's not a perfect number, but eight's just not enough. <laughs> right. When you talk about backing up each position. Um, so we'll see. The other position that was interesting is defensive tackle, and I have to wonder if Colin Saunders' injury dealing with a calf issue was a factor because I did not, for the life of me, think they were going to keep five defensive tackles. I thought they might keep three. Usually four is a safe number, but you're talking about you know, Nathan Shepard, Colin Saunders, then Brian Brzee, Christian Boyd, the rookie, and Kendall Vickers, who I, I did not expect to be kept. And I, I do wonder if the depth issue there with Colin's injury may be was a factor only they only used one of those IR slots that they could have in the preseason so that's helpful in terms of I think you're optimistic that some of these guys with injuries like Nick Saldaveri, Jalen Ford, DeMarco Jackson they're not going to miss significant time you're hopeful to get them back in the first month of the season yeah, and, and you wonder okay are, are there players that they're going to shift to IR but they could have done that today if they wanted to so I think that is a pretty safe indicator that some of these guys will be coming back. All right, they could have done it with two. They did it with one, and that was Kendrick yep. Miller, designated to return. So he is out for a minimum of four, could return as early as week five at Kansas City, which is just – it's just to, to say that sentence for that guy who was at the first practice and had the, you know, the hamstring issue, it's just baffling. It's just baffling. I don't want him to be out there. Yeah, I think he's, you know, he's a young kid. I want him to get out there and, 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 and you know, learn to be an NFL player. And I think he's got the skills. It's just the whole thing's just baffling. Yeah, it's frustrating because, you know, it, it's funny because you look at Isaiah Foskey and you look at Kendra Miller, and I think they're both kind of talked about as players that – I've heard a lot of people saying, hey, cut both of these guys. Now, I, I think in year two, you're, you're not going to do that unless there are mitigating factors beyond struggling on the field, which I think – would have to be the case to cut Foskey. And the, and the thing is, you're talking about a player who, by all accounts, is doing everything right. He's working hard. The coaches say that he's taking steps in practice. We're not necessarily seeing that, that in the game. And that alone, in year two for a second-round pick, is enough to keep you on the roster, right? Like, this is a team that scouted you. They have faith that you'll develop over time. With Kendra, it's the opposite, where we've seen him flash on the field. We've seen him. That Week 18 game, I would argue, was the best single running back game of any running back last year right, in terms of the performances they've had. I've said this stat a million times. The Saints had two plays of 30-plus yards from the running back position last year. Kendra Miller had both of them. One was in Week 5 against the Patriots. One was in Week 9 against the Bears. It was the play he got. He hurt his ankle on. So the explosive plays on the running back position, you look at Kendra and you're like, this is a guy who can provide those, but he just can't stay on the field. And hopefully it's a wake-up call. I, I mean, like I feel like we've been saying that. But, you know, they could have cut bait. They chose not to. And so hopefully he kind of sees this as a, as a, I don't know, kind of a come to Jesus moment where it's like, okay, I, I need to get this straightened out. I need to get healthy. I need to get on the field. DA hasn't exactly pulled punches in terms of how he feels about the situation. And that's putting it lightly. So, yeah, hopefully this is something that you, you, we look at halfway through the season and we're like, okay, this was a turning point for him. Because you know the the running back position is the you know it's two two older guys and then a, then a young guy who I don't think would be on the roster if Kendra had taken that spot, 
uh, in Jordan Mims. And Kendra's absence has been a has opened the door for Jordan Mims. So we, we should talk about that in the extent of he took advantage of that opportunity. James right. Robinson Robinson had a good camp. Jacob Cabote had a really strong finish to his camp. But we've been talking about Jordan Mims the entire way. He's a guy who showed up at rookie minicamp this year. He didn't have to do that. He showed up because he wanted to. He wanted to put in the extra work. He wanted to learn the playbook. And, you know, I think that that commitment benefited him. And I think if you can combine, you know, if you could get that level of commitment out of Kendra to some extent, I think he'd be in a much better situation. So, yeah, well, he's going to be someone we keep talking about. Uh, hopefully he can he can get back sooner rather than later and and kind of get up to speed so that by week five you feel comfortable playing him if, you, if you, there's an opportunity to. But certainly not someone that you feel particularly excited about, especially when, you know, we just watched Tajay Spears – uh, yeah. And he continues to be a guy that people are going to be kind of wringing their hands over. Um, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, no, I agree. That was tough with Ty with Jake. You get that automatic comparison. We knew that would, would, would come. It is what it is. Hopefully, he can get out there soon. Mike Oss, along with Saints sideline reporter Jeff Nowak, as we're talking about the Saints. I'm sorry, I just had a breath mint, and it's, it's kind of like going down <laughs> wrong. I'm like, <laughs> sorry. This is uh, live. Mike. I'm like, ah, ah, here we go. All right. Uh, with Jeff wait, Noah. wait, can we talk about something? Oh, God. Mike, I, I, I know speaking what you're of you say. making crazy noises, I want to, I want to, I just want to shout out your call of the Samson Nakua kick return was one of my favorite moments on the broadcast uh, in years. And, and for perspective, and, and I don't know if most people realize this, is I'm standing on the sideline, I'm getting your calls piped into my ears in real time. So as I'm watching this moment unfold, I'm hearing you screaming, no! It was. It made the moment so much better. So I wanted to mention that because it was one of my favorite moments on the sideline so far. I just couldn't believe he ran that far. I go, come on, it's preseason. <laughs> Let it go. The cat ran 106 yards. Come on, man. Turn those machines back on. Uh, and the funny part was, I kind of, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, I kind of was late to it because Deuce was, we were talking about the, the play itself. And he was talking about Devin Hester. And that, that's not where I go. I immediately go to Auburn versus Alabama. And so my head yeah, was still yeah. in Auburn, Alabama. And I go, oh, hey, caught the ball. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, man, that was a heck of a run. That's, I, I, that's um, unbeknownst to me. It was where I was going to begin. It's a little, you know, uh, cut 53 fact. The Saints today cut the brothers or released the brothers of two all-pro receivers. You don't see that very often. Samson Nakua and Equinemia St. Brown. Uh, clearly, both of them have more NFL playing to do. Hopefully, uh, see what happens tomorrow. But and it's uh, those two, Equinemia really fell behind the eight ball with the injury. And it was seems like it was so hard for him to come back. But they both have similar body types, similar size, and just kind of that hunger to go up and get the football and go across the middle and, and do what's needed. I feel like there's more there. Yeah, I, I kind of felt like going into the training camp that uh, one of Cedric Wilson or Equinemia St. Brown is going to kind of take that role of the veteran blocking receiver, right? Like, um, it just made sense. You, you don't need you don't need a whole room of those guys, but you do need at least one of those guys. You know, like, there's a reason Traquan Smith was here for as long as he was because he was that guy. Um, and once Cedric Wilson kind of took over that role and, and never really gave it back, which was helped by the injury, right? I so said that's how Samson even arrived here. They had so many receivers out at one point, you know, that other guys were getting an opportunity. Right, right. And so, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's where you were. And Equinemius, I think, you know, he probably, I think that tape that he put out in week three is going to help him sign somewhere else. He's a vested veteran, so he doesn't have to go through the waiver system. So he can kind of shop around and say, hey, who wants this, right? Because I, I still, I clearly still have something to give. Um, Samson, I expect to, if he clears waivers, to get to the practice squad. And that's kind of where we're at right now with a lot of these guys who got cut, um, at least the, the non-veteran players like the Charlie Smiths of the world and, and guys like that who, you know, you're, you're just kind of waiting and seeing. And then I think a lot of those guys you want to get on the practice squad. And it's just a question of whether you, whether you can. But, you know, Samson, I, I wish I'd seen more from him in the preseason games. We, I think he had one catch, and it was the uh, – on the on the final drive against the Cardinals, yeah, the back shoulder. Um, he had a, di- a diving attempt in that game uh, on on Sunday. But I, I like Samson. He's a really funny story. You know, just for you know one's kind of note uh, when he was talking in the locker room, he he said like when Darren sent him out there to return that kick, he didn't really understand why because 
he was like 50 yards. That seems like a normal length kick. Well, why would we assume this was short? And I think that's just like some skewed perspective from watching Charlie Smith make 65 yarders look routine. And so <laughs> suddenly it's like, oh, wait, 58 yard is a long kick for most of the rest of the world, just not Charlie. Um, but no, Samson's a really, really intriguing guy, a really funny story. So I hope you can, a, a fun story. So I hope you can stick around. Well, we appreciate it, my friend. Tomorrow we will start a new day, get that practice squad. And then, you know, I feel like there's going to be a, this is going to be a very busy, busy team from the waiver wire, from a backup standpoint, or maybe who knows, maybe, you know, in, into this 53. And I uh, appreciate it as always. And we'll talk tomorrow. Sounds good, Mike. Thanks. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. I know this was a quicker episode, but again, I just wanted to get you something so you had some kind of reaction to the 53-man roster. Again, I didn't want to record a full episode until we have the full picture after waivers clear. That's going to be 3 p.m. on Wednesday. Now, there could still be roster changes after that point, but I think that's going to be the first kind of wave of additions, subtractions. I expect some pretty significant changes in the offensive line room. Again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a new punter. A few other positions could see a makeover as well. So once that happens, I'm going to try to get on here with Steve Geller and record a full episode. Hopefully we can get that to you either Thursday night or Friday morning. But until then, thanks everyone for listening. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Otherwise, who dat? Go Saints. Be easy, y'all. Peace.